Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler from Melda Production. Last week, I put out a song called Shardic Ascension. If you haven't checked it out, check that out on my site. But today I want to do a breakdown of it. I'm not going to do the guitars today, but I want to do the drums and all the synthesizers and things. What I was trying to go for with this was I wanted to do like a jazz fusion meets EDM type thing. I've been having this idea for a long time and I finally did it. And this is actually very complex, uh, kind of harmonically, but also production wise. So let's go through some of that production stuff right now. I'll start with the drums. So I'll let you hear this intro just for reference. <laughs> Now what I did here was actually very simple. I had the drums, but I took my normal drum sound and I just put a bandpass filter on it where I'm cutting out the low frequencies and the high fre frequencies here. What this does is it kind of gives it a lighter feel until it goes into the verse here and then it's gonna open everything up. You see here, I have the automation here and uh, I'll try to play this here and you'll see how it opens up. Let me just play the drums for you. So what I wanted to do with this is kind of create like a drum and bass, like jungle type of thing. And I used M Drummer for this. If you look here, you can see the different patterns I did. I believe I used some of the patterns in the rhythm generator. I used this and I used, uh, I didn't use dubstep. I forgot what I used. I used some one something out of electronic genres here. Uh, I forgot which one I did. I did two of them here, probably jungle, one of these. And that added my hi-hats in here. And then I just added the snare drums in and the bass drums myself. So I have a few different variations in here especially with the hi-hats, which I think sounds good. Even this one has ride cymbal. That's one of the things I love about M Drummer. It will do all that stuff for me. So I, all I have to do is just make the basic beat and it will do all the cymbal stuff for me. And it'll give me lots of variations that I can mess with throughout this song. So that's what I did there. Once I get to the verse, instead of doing lots of fills, actually I did use fills too. But one thing I also used was I used M Rhythmizer on the hi-hats to give it a different feel. And this is cool for, I think, drum and bass or like glitch or even like trap music, it's cool, I think. Uh, if I expand this out where it says drums here, it looks like I'm just using one track, but I'm actually not. I have these all here. So I have all these different drums. Let me move this up so you can see in Rhythmizer. And I have this and I'm automating it. You can automate this by using MIDI commands, but in this case, I'm using automation. And if I move this down and collapse this, you should be able to see in here. So this sequence, this is my automation track. And what I did was I just, as this was going along, I would hit one of the buttons in the in rhythmizer to change it. And then I would, you know, have it go back. Unfortunately, when you do this, sometimes it's not always on beat. So what you can do is just go back through the automation and just snap it to grid and it works out. So I'll go into here where there's more so you can hear what's happening. So listen to the hi-hat. So you can hear those little like triplets and things, and that's all been done in M Rhythmizer with the time settings. So I think that's a really cool thing you can do with M Rhythmizer to give something some like momentum, but it's not really so distracting. At first when I did this, I did it on the whole drum set and I thought, ah, it's too much, this doesn't sound good. But just doing it on one instrument, especially the hi-hat, I thought sounded great. I'll show you something else. If you look here at the drop, I'll open this up and I'll let you hear what happens here at the drop. So it's going into halftime and it's more like a dubstep type, type feel and you're probably wondering like how do you do that? You could try to do it all on channel one, but I think the better way to do this anytime you have something that's going half speed or lots of different time signatures, use a different channel. So here, this is my dubstep channel and I have everything going at half speed so I have lots of different beats in here like this.
for some reason, M Rhythmizer is going and kind of going crazy there, but you get the idea of what's happening. I use the same thing M Rhythmizer here to create some variations there, etc. So I'm switching back and forth with these. If you're wondering how do I do that with MIDI commands, all you have to do is on your MIDI track, yeah, let me see if I can make it large enough so you can see it. Where are my MIDI commands? Here. For the intro and the verse, I'm using channel one. So if you look at one of these MIDI notes and I uh, make it big enough so I can see it, I can look at the properties or something. So if I say MIDI channel is note channel one. But as I get to the drop, I put them on channel two. Uh, where is it? There we go. Here's in the drop. So if I look here, no channel, it's on channel two. And that's what you want. But be sure when you do that is shut off channel one first. So I'm going in here. Yeah, up here. Disabled. So I'm making sure that I'm disabling channel one here. The reason that is, is if you don't do that, you can have channel one and channel two playing at the same time, which you definitely don't want that. So make sure you use one of these disabled commands to disable channel one here, like this. There you go. And the same thing when you're done with the drop, make sure you disable channel two. Easy enough. I used some different processing, but I didn't actually use that much. I forgot what preset I used for M Drummer, but I didn't do too much here. I just did a little bit of EQ work, not too much. A little bit of compression here. That part is barely doing anything. It's mostly on the drop where I'm using some compression just a little bit. So that gave you an idea of what I did with the drums. If you have any other questions, leave those down below. Let's move on here. The pad, the beginning, and going through this. This is a device I made quite a while ago called Crystal Pad, and it's good for things like this. Um, you can just find it in here. It's called Sensual, if you want that sound. I use that through most of it, and then if you look on the pad, you also see I used M Rhythmizer here. I did the same thing here when I went up. Let me see, where is my pad? Up here, pad. I'm doing the same thing with the sequences to change these. So at the beginning, there's nothing happening. But as I move forward, like here, the Rhythmizer turns on, and you hear it doing some rhythmic stuff. I think you can barely hear that, but I think it does kind of add something and gives it some forward momentum in there. So that's just me. But that's what I did for that. I did a little bit of EQing here, nothing drastic really, mostly just low cut so it wouldn't interfere with the bass. And speaking of bass, let's get into that. I used lots of different basses on this, but I'll look at the liquid bass I did here. This one I just used. This Reese device I made a while ago also. I have this really low and I have the uh, low pass filter on it. So you're not really hearing too much wobbling. It's just like a, a low growling sound like this. Probably could have opened up that low pass filter a little bit more, but you get the idea. I didn't want something that really you know, took over everything. I just wanted like a low rumbling sound that you could feel and you could hear a little bit of grinding, but it wasn't really getting in the way of anything else. The other stuff happens when I get to the drop here, like this. <laughs> So I have about three things going on here. The first one is this big growl bass, and that's using this FM growl bass. I believe I did a video on this before, so if you haven't checked it out, check it out. It's basically that just in device form, so you can have it there. I used Back to Basics preset on there. That's all that is, and then just a little bit of EQ afterwards. The other one, I had this screeching sound here. This one I had to make from scratch. 
what I did was I took a triangle wave here and then I used another triangle wave, but I used sync half windowed. And what I'm doing here is I'm having it go up in semitones. Let me turn on my keyboard. All I'm doing there is I'm moving it up in semitones and it's using this attack. So it's going up at uh, 88 milliseconds to go all the way up from the top to the bottom. And when you have one staying at the same pitch level and one going up, it creates that wee wee sound. And then I'm merging it together here using frequency modulation. So this is the FM synthesis. There's two versions, the normal one and then the absolute. I just thought the absolute sounded better. So that's why I used it. And then it's going into a double tracker here just to make it a little bit wider. That's all it is. The other one I have is this wavetable. I believe I found this online, but it just sounds good to me. A nice growling table. That's it. Oh, I think those three together gave it enough you know, different sounds there. And then I have them all going into this bus here. And I have sidechain on here. So whenever it goes through, it's ducking the bass depending on my bass drum hits. So that way my kick drum and my low sounds here aren't fighting each other like this. That's all I'm doing there. I don't believe there's too much else there. I have also some risers. These I all made in M Sound Factory, but I, Decided it was easier if I just exported them out as audio and just placed them here. Or here. Or maybe the same as the other one. So I wanted a few different sounds and it was easier than trying to make a bunch of different tracks or trying to switch M Sound Factory. Just, you know, exporting them to audio and placing them where I wanted to worked. So I thought that was good. If you're wondering which device that was, I'll try to show you here. Uh, let's see. I think it's Riser Maker in effects, maybe. Noise Riser Maker right here. So this is the one I used. I made this a while ago and it has different... Uh, setups for one bar, two bar, three bar, eight bars, going up and down. It's hopefully easy to use. So that's all I did for the riser. And I believe that's everything I did for this. There's a lots of changes going on in this song. So I'm using that uh, bandpass filter quite a bit. I'm using rhythmize, in rhythmizer quite a bit too, to just kind of change things up and give things a different feel throughout the song. I wanted some different sections and I also didn't want it to feel like, ah, oh, just repeating the sections again. I wanted almost like something new every single time. Sometimes you might have to listen really hard to hear it, but that's what I wanted to do. And lots of these plugins really helped me. I'll show you some of the guitar stuff next time, but I think that's pretty much all of it here. And then I used M Turbo Comp afterwards. And of course I used M Compare, which I use on almost every single mix, just so I can hear how mine sounds compared to some other tracks to make sure it's loud enough or the bass is loud enough or too loud, the treble's okay, etc. So that's one of the things I would recommend everybody using. However, that's it. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, leave it down below and I'll go over it hopefully. If you care about any of the theory stuff uh, about the chords or anything, let me know and I'll try to go over that too. But next week I'll go over all the guitars. So pay attention and uh, subscribe for that. But until next time, check out all the other plugins at melderproduction.com and see you.